If you don't want to screw up your kid's relationship with food, you basically should do the exact opposite of everything in this video right here from Bobby Parrish. You might know this guy by the name Flav City because he's all over the internet. He has 2.2 million followers on Instagram, 4.2 million followers or subscribers on YouTube, and 1.3 million on TikTok. He's also pretty controversial, and there are plenty of dietitians and other nutrition experts who have reacted to him like a lot of them. But I wanted to add my opinion into the mix specifically specifically looking at one video where he's taking his young daughter around Costco and he's pointing out which foods are good and bad for you. Because as a registered dietitian and also as a dad who wants my son to have a great relationship with food, I have a lot to say. So keep watching as I react to this video that caught my attention from Bobby Parrish, Flav City. Hey guys, it's Andres here, registered dietitian and nutrition coach, back with another reaction to a viral video that came out a few months ago from Flav City. The reason I wanted to talk about this now is because I've been thinking a lot lately about how I want to talk to my son about food. Ever since I became a parent, I've been sharing some of my thoughts on this over on Instagram. And it's really been resonating with a lot of parents out there. So many people who are becoming parents soon or have young kids right now grew up on households where there was a lot of fear around food. Maybe their parents were always on diets or they were told that certain foods were bad or fattening. When I start working with a lot of my clients, this is exactly what they tell me, that they've been struggling with food and weight for their whole life. And he started with the way that their parents talked about food. So I wanted to take a look at this Flav City video and give you some of my thoughts. Let's see what Bobby has to say. The parents might see Kids Bar Organic and they're gonna buy it. But I have a serious question, Rosie. Is soybean oil Bobby approved? Is natural flavors Bobby approved? No. And 10 grams of sugar per bar is two and a half teaspoons. We have a better option for you. These are the bars you want Rose is chomping on right now. Do we see cane sugar? No, we see maple syrup. Do we see processed oils? No, coconut oil with a real deal ingredients. But Rosie, is it good? Yeah. There you go. All right. First of all, what the hell does Bobby approved actually mean? Even though Bobby Parrish makes nutrition claims in every single one of his videos, he's not a dietitian or a food scientist. He's just an influencer who likes to cook. Bobby started out on YouTube filming cooking videos, and now he has millions of followers. He sells cookbooks, cookware, supplements. He's very successful, and I'll give them that. That's amazing. He actually commented on his credentials before. So apparently, he's taking his time to read research, but also it's not willing to provide any scientific studies to back up any of his claims. That is interesting. He also created a Bobby approved food scanner app, which I just found out as I was doing the research for this video. And here's what the app store actually says. Bobby approved is a free scanner app that instantly shows if a food product is good for your health or not. It goes on to say the bad ingredients are highlighted in red and by tapping on them, you can learn why. Bobby has spent years researching ingredients in products and their potential health impact and has created a list of over 100 100 harmful ingredients. So apparently he's done years of research on bad ingredients and yet he's not interested in sharing any scientific studies. The last thing I'll say about this Bobby approved foods is that his videos are full of contradictions. Take a look at this reaction video by a fellow dietitian Liam on TikTok that I came across the other day. These are the bars you want Rose is chomping on right now. Do we see cane sugar? No. Cane sugar? Bad. Almond and pecan clusters are on sale. These are nice. Sweetened with just a touch of sugar except in almond and pecan clusters no matter what type of sugar it is do not eat it i don't care if it's cane sugar okay never mind sunflower safflower grapeseed and canola oil run forest run okay grapeseed oil bad i'm gonna drizzle in a couple teaspoons of grapeseed oil grizzly bear style except in potato pancakes. So basically he's created a bunch of arbitrary food rules about what makes foods good or bad. Now this labeling of foods as good or bad is actually one of the biggest issues that I have with Bobby's content in general. Demonizing certain foods and trying to cut them out of your diet is completely unnecessary and creates a lot of guilt around food choices. Now I'm not saying that some foods aren't more nutrient dense than others. Of course there's going to be more and less nutritious foods but the nutrient content in a food doesn't make a food good or bad or let's just not apply those labels. 
labels. And we're saying that it does, that can lead to a lot of stress when it comes down to your diet and how you make nutrition decisions. What happens if you have one of those so-called bad foods? Instantly you feel guilty and for a lot of people it can lead to overeating or binging on that food because of an all or nothing mindset towards nutrition that we tend to gravitate towards to. The other thing that I wanna point out in this clip is that what he has to say about sugar. He says those first bars are unhealthy because they have 10 grams of cane sugar in them. And then he says that the second bars are a good choice because they're sweetened with maple syrup. But what I don't think he understands is that maple syrup is still added sugar. Look at the nutrition facts for the bar he recommends. It has six grams of added sugar, which yes, is less than the first bar, but he's acting like the difference between maple syrup and cane sugar is important when your body actually treats all sugars the same way. Maple syrup isn't bad or anything like that. But just like cane sugar, it should also be consumed in moderation because it contains exactly the same amount of calories. Now, I'm not gonna get into debunking every single nutrition claim he makes in this video because otherwise this video would be probably an hour long or more. And I'm not trying to make a movie here. So I'm just going to say that no one single ingredient he talks about in this video needs to be cut out in your diet to be healthy. Yes, there are things like sugar that we want to minimize and eat in moderation, but all these products can be part of a balanced diet if you enjoy them. But if you do have questions about any ingredients that he mentions, make sure you leave a comment below and I can talk more about specific ingredients or make a whole video on it. So let's keep watching. Veggie stars, they're good, but not so good. I saw one kid doing them yesterday. Where, at the playground? Yeah. Yeah, they're actually not good. A lot of parents buy these thinking they are veggie straws. They're starchy, oily straws. Look at this. It's corn flour, potato starch, potato flour, corn starch, rice flour, and then a little bit of vegetables cooked in inflammatory sunflower oil. I would put this one back because there aren't many veggies at all. So he's back at it with the good and bad foods. Something that really stood out to me here is the way that he's essentially teaching his daughter to judge other people's food choices. She saw someone at the playground eating veggie straws and automatically thought that they're not that good. Imagine what's going to happen when this little girl gets older. Maybe she wants to enjoy a pizza party with her friends, but she's got her dad's voice in her head telling her that pizza is bad. Now, I'm not here to judge parenting or the way he does it ultimately that's his decision but here's the thing what message is this actually going to send parents who are trying to do their best to teach their kids about food when we look at the ingredients he's bashing here of course he's going to be making claims about seed oil this is something that a ton of natural health influencers are demonizing right now and again something i could make a whole video on but the main thing i want to say is that if someone is a scientist or has any type of evidence-based understanding of nutrition they're never going to claim that a single food is responsible for a long list of health problems in fact if you haven't had a chance to follow or seen food science babes content i totally recommend you check it out she's an actual food scientist explaining the science and safety of every single ingredient that you eat in your food human health is complex guys and it's impossible for one food to be the only cause of a specific health problem but when we actually look into the research here which clearly bobby has not done there isn't any evidence to suggest that seed and vegetable oils are inflammatory one systematic review and meta analysis which is the highest quality of research out there because it brings together a result of multiple different studies studies found that increasing dietary linoleic acid intake, which is one of the main fatty acids in vegetables and seed oils, does not have a significant effect on blood concentrations of inflammatory markers. This is one of many studies that either show no effect or sometimes even improvements in health markers when consuming this type of oils. Now, when you look at the ingredients in this veggie straws, Bobby's right that there aren't a lot of veggies in them. But is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. Veggie straws contain some carbs and some fats, but no fiber and very little protein. I think of this veggie straws product more like a way to eat chips. So if you're choosing veggie straws because you think they're healthy and are getting your serving of vegetables, I would say maybe there are better ways to do that. But if you love to taste the veggie straws and want to eat them as chips, maybe go for it. But just watch your portions. Now for a more nutrient dense option, I'll recommend having some real veggie straws like chopped veggies on the side for some fiber and nutrients along with a source of protein. Maybe something like Greek yogurt based ranch dip. You can actually do this kind of thing with any snack or meal where you can have whatever it is that you're craving, maybe some of these veggie straws and add other foods to it for extra nutrients to kind of balance things out. Okay, let's watch the end of the video now. These look like a healthy, kid-friendly snack, but artificial flavors in here, two teaspoons of corn syrup, and Rose, is artificial colors Bobby approved? No, no way, Bobby instead. Approved. That's it, because that is it. Apples and strawberries, apples and mangoes, apples and blueberries. Bobby approved. 
more fear mongering here. There's nothing wrong with having some foods with artificial flavors. And they're very low concentrations in most of these food items anyways, like these fruit snacks. As for the sugar, it's the same as what I said earlier. Having large amounts of added sugars, and then in this case, corn syrup, isn't super healthy. And these aren't the most nutrient dense snacks out there that you can find. But saying certain foods are bad or off limits is going to do more harm than good for your child. Now, I'm not here to judge again parenting, and that's definitely something that he gets to choose how he decides to do. Now, I've talked in this video about a lot of issues with how he's speaking about food with his daughter. And he's clear that he's already picked up a lot of her dad's food rules. So if you want to help your child build a better and healthier relationship with food so that he or she doesn't grow up scared of everything that they eat, I want to finish off this video by sharing five specific things that I personally will never say to my own son about food. Number one, you shouldn't have blank because it's bad for you. As I mentioned, this is something Bobby does throughout the video that I will not do to my own son. You will never hear me talking about foods as being good or bad because I don't want him to grow up thinking some foods are off limits and you should never have them and other foods are okay to have. Why? Because for kids and adults, the things we're not supposed to have are the things that we want the most. Instead, what I want to teach him is proper balance. All foods can fit into a healthy and balanced diet. The problem with Bobby is he uses all or nothing controversy to grow his audience and your food decisions can never be all or nothing or you will be very miserable every single time that you're making food decisions. Number two, you have to finish everything on your plate before you can have dessert. I don't want to say that because I don't ever want to force my son to eat past the point of fullness or reward him for eating his dinner with dessert. I will explain the importance of eating enough to satisfaction and how eating enough protein, carbs, and veggies will make him healthier and stronger. Number three, these foods are not allowed in our household. These are bad for you. I don't want to ever make my son feel there are foods that are off limits for him. There will also be a lot of foods we simply do not buy, not because they're bad, but simply because they're not part of our daily dietary choices. When we restrict kids of things they would enjoy and label them as prohibited, they will have them when you're not looking. I work with many adults now that will eat food alone and hidden away from people. This is conditioned from early childhood because they're afraid to get in trouble for eating certain things that are not quote unquote allowed. Number four, if you're quiet, if you behave, I'll give you a cookie. Using food as a reward can be tempting for many parents. I don't want to do that because it creates a mindset that food is a reward for something well done. Many people I work with as adults right now struggle with this. They go to drive throughs or pick up comfort foods as a rewards for being good. This started out when they were young. And five, it would make me super happy if you take three more bites. I honestly don't want my son to make choices around food based on what would make me or his mom happy. Instead, I want to teach him about nutrition by explaining what different foods will help his body do. For example, I might say something like, hey, Maxi, chicken has protein, so it will help your body get stronger. Or potatoes have carbohydrates that will give your body more energy to play. Once he learns the importance of nutrition throughout what we teach him, I want him to make his own decisions with that information. At the same time, I'll expose him to new foods by putting them on his plate consistently without forcing him to eat them if he doesn't want to. And I'll be a role model for him by eating a variety of foods in front of him too. Now, as he gets older, because he's only seven months old right now, I'll get him involved in cooking and preparing foods. Even if you're someone who has struggled with your own personal relationship with food for years, you can help your child have a completely different experience while also rebuilding your own food relationship along the way. So here's my big takeaway here. My problem with this guy's videos along with hundreds of other influencers who create content like this is that they don't understand what balance and moderation means. Maybe because talking about balance and moderation doesn't really help you go viral and doesn't get views. I don't know, maybe. But the main message that I'm trying to get across here is that you can have a fruit snack today and maybe tomorrow you will have some real fruit. You can have some high sugar snacks today and maybe later today you will munch on some veggies with some hummus. Let's start removing the labels around food and just learn how to create this balance. None of these people are teaching you how to create. Now, we teach our clients how to create this balance. One of my favorite things that I hear from the parents who have gone through our nutrition blueprint method, which is our 16 week one on one coaching program, is that it hasn't just changed their life. It's also made a huge impact on the way that they teach nutrition to their kids and the way that they eat. Because when you take a new, healthier, and more balanced approach to your own nutrition, it has a ripple effect on your whole family. If you want to learn the process we use with our clients to help them improve their nutrition, their lifestyle, and their mindset in four steps, check out the description box below for a short mini training that I created on how we help our clients transform not only their lives, but the lives of everyone in their families as well. Okay, that's everything that I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoy watching my reaction to this video. Now, if you come across any other videos you'd like me to watch and react to, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message on Instagram at Andres Ayesta and let me know. Bye for now and see you guys on the next video.